the way that we're eating, especially in the States and other cultures similar to ours, is that we're having so much meat, grease, and oil that is really leading us to have these lifestyle-related diseases of type 2 diabetes, obesity, you know, cancers, common small cancers, and just heart disease, especially, just terribly. And these things are completely preventable and reversible. So I'm asking and trying to promote, like we, our message is, hey, just eat more veg, have more vegetables, have more fruit, have more greens, have more grains, have more berries, have more just things that are going to make you not go this way with your health, but go this way with your health. And it is possible. We've seen it as you have time after time after time. Things are preventable and reversible. This is the Healthy Lifestyle Solutions Podcast, and I'm your host, Maya Acosta. If you're willing to go with me, together we can discover how simple lifestyle choices can help improve our quality of life. Let's get started. All right. Welcome back, my friends. Welcome to the latest episode uh, where we are going to be speaking with the inspiring Anne and Jane Esselstyn, a mother and daughter duo. And their mission is to spread the message of plant-based living for women from their best-selling cookbooks to their upcoming retreats and programs that they really have for women. We're going to dive and learn about their story and explore the benefits of adopting a plant-based lifestyle. So if you're interested in learning how plants can and powerfully support your body and mind. Join us for this episode and discover the secrets of the plant-based woman warrior movement. Welcome, Anne and Jane. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi. Hi. This is a pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, making it on the show. Your family has played such a big role in our lives. And uh, more specifically, I just, before we get going, I want to share with you how Really, the work that your father has done, Jane, your husband, and changed the course of how my husband practices medicine today. He's a vascular surgeon. And today, I'm going to hold up one of the books. I have about four books by your family, but uh, The Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease is really the book that um, my husband started to learn from initially. But the person that actually convinced him to listen to this information was your brother, Rip Esselstyn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you remember this book, oh, My yeah, Beef well, With Me? It's, it's now called name. Plant Strong. Yeah. Right. So I know there, there's been a rebrand now, right? And so he's changed everything. He no longer references Engine 2 or anything like that. But when he wrote this book, I want to say it was somewhere in 2013 or 14, he was touring and that's when he had that partnership with Whole Foods. And he came right in front of our building where we lived. We had a Whole Foods and I knew about the, about him because I was already learning about this way of living. And so my husband says that I dragged him to the lecture and food was included uh, in this uh, event. And my husband walked away in shock with his, I mean, just could not believe it, came home. And he shares in a story that he was sort of insulted to hear that a firefighter was telling him that the same disease that he was trained to treat could actually be reversed. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's an amazing story. That's so fr- that's It is. Great to have I mean, hear that. Rip, and then, well, Rip changed our lives, led my husband to you know, prevent and reverse disease. And then Rip came around again a few years ago. (laughs) And then I think he was promoting this one, the seven day rescue diet. Jane did this. I did all the recipes and plants strong. I did the recipes in that book. I did all the recipes. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what we're going to talk about all of this. So it's an honor to have you both on the show because the reason I have a podcast is because I wanted to first make it easy for my husband's patients to um, be able to listen to the information in case they couldn't come to one of our in-person events. Let's start with you, Anne. I've heard you say that when you develop recipes, you do so with the patients in mind. I feel like you and I are very similar. In some ways. I was working with my husband on trying to do that end of the story. And when we started, you know, it was back in the early 80s. And he decided that he would do this after research, etc. And uh, just we had to do it. 
no internet, you know, no, no thousands of vegan or plant-based cookbooks. So we just experimented. No, no, like no, like health food stores, if you will, in Cleveland, no whole foods for sure. I mean, so, and, um, actually today I feel we were so lucky because we did not have the vegan junk food world out there to be so tempting. And right now today, that world is attracting people who are getting just as sick mm -hmm. as people you know, used to get when b before plant-based. Yeah, standard American diet. That's right. And what we say when it comes to that, because I, um, this month I, in April, I will be seven years vegan. I am an ethical vegan, but I also am plant-based. And when you say that, Anne, one of the first mistakes that I made, which is why I'm happy that you have this cookbook, but one of the mistakes I made is that first year we were traveling a lot and I found the convenience foods in the frozen sections of the grocery stores. So I started incorporating the processed vegan foods into my diet. And that first year I gained weight. And then I said to my husband, I think I'm doing something wrong. I'm not eating enough salads. I'm not eating enough greens. And so I went back to the books to study. And I share that often with my listeners because I always want to encourage, um, especially most of my listeners are women, always want to encourage you to find ways to incorporate more plant-based foods into your diet and move away from the processed foods. And we now say that vegan processed foods are like the standard American diet veganized because they can still be at risk. Jane and I in 2014. 14. Wrote this book. I mean, we did the recipes. I don't know if it's reverse for you, but it's Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook. It's a companion it. to my mom's book. Totally. Yep. A companion yep. to uh, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease of my husband's. And mm -hmm. these recipes are just made for people with heart disease, vascular disease, you know, I mean, everything. It's all of our guidelines for all the books we've done, all of Rip's books, all of our books. You know, no we've, meat, we've no done all, oil, we've done all the recipes no for all those books. Yeah, no meat, no oil, no dairy. Like that is the key of it. And, you know, minimal salt, minimal sweet. Um, and having no nuts and no avocados, uh, especially with heart disease patients. That's what makes the heart disease stuff we do different than some of the plant strong engine two stuff that we do, which has some avocado and some nuts. And some people freak out. I thought your dad said no walnuts. How dare you have that? And I'm like, well, if you dig a little deeper, it's because... We're trying to prevent heart disease with these people, um, but just keep other people going on a, a plant-based diet. Yes. And Jane, since you, since you did contribute, you, you did write that uh, cookbook for the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease com um, companion portion. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So as we covered in February, um, heart disease awareness, and my husband does counsel people about uh, why it's important to adopt this. You know, basically Dr. Esselstyn's protocol is what we say. Well, we always say get a variety of greens, but um, people are a little bit afraid of spinach, and I'm not going to go into detail about that because yeah, I just, think it's there green, are some... Green, green, six times a day. We have a, we have a YouTube right. channel that we... Just like you, we made it for uh, for all the heart disease patients, and it's ended yeah. up being more more of the folks than that. But one of our videos is greens, greens, greens. How to eat them, you know, as many times a day as possible, and you know, cooked, raw, chopped, steamed, baked, however, but just any kind of green. Um, I wish we had that. My Actually, dad has a wrap. We have a shirt like a like a rap song, rap of all the greens. <laughs> we'll, we'll get him <laughs> here to do it before you. We no, wait, no, no, hit me up right here. But you know what? Um, here they are. I think here it is. Bok choy, Swiss chard, kale, collards, collard green, beets green, mustard green, turnip greens, napa cabbage, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, cilantro, parsley, spinach, arugula, asparagus, and on and on. There's so many greens. That's when we what we mean six times a day. Spinach. When we wrote this book, Prevent and Reverse mm -hmm. Heart Disease Cookbook, we dedicated it to, to all what, the greens. All the greens. I love it. <laughs> That's wonderful. So I definitely need to put a link to that book so that people can go out and, and buy it. So it's not just reading the research that Dr. Esselstyn writes in his book, but then we have to have the companion cookbook uh, to know exactly what well, we need to eat to have. Was, to this was seven years after that book. Yeah. And so that okay. certain things are different. But what I wanted to say is that my husband has a cereal that he oats uh, 
He eats every morning with lots of tons of fruit, but he doesn't have greens. And so every day when I cook my breakfast, which has greens in it, which has got greens, I always cook a side of kale for him. There are so many different kinds of kale. And um, so get your followers or your husband's Mm -hmm. patients to vary those greens and especially push on the kale. And yeah. Actually, okay. Thank you. It's mixed into things. We don't need a lot of spinach. Yeah. Are so we- it, it really is seeing, um, for example, hearing all the stories of the suffering that happens when it comes to my husband's patients who are very advanced. It's a driving force for us to continue to do this work. But really, you as the Esselstyn family have been really role models in terms of how we can support our own community. Jane, I'd love for you to speak a little bit about how you both decided, and I think you wrote this during the pandemic, how did you decide to write Be a Plant-Based Woman Warrior? Why why are we focusing on women? All right. The name of the book is Be a Plant-Based Woman Warrior. Live fierce, stay bold, eat delicious. Whenever we have a chance to say the title, we love to say the title. Um, Love it. No, yeah, we um, actually, it was March 7th, 2020, when we got our, the, uh, the contract to do this project. And we thought, hip, hip, hooray, because we had all people from all over the country were at our, my parents' house. And we all were saying hello like this. Give me your elbow. Give me your elbow. We were saying hello oh. like this. We didn't really know what was going on. Remember that? And we had this live, you know, over 250 people, this live, our annual event for women, which you know, is, is called, you know, prevent reverse heart disease or whatever for women. Then the world shut down the next week. So yeah, we had this contract. Luckily, you know, we got so lucky during COVID to have this project to work on. And we live next door to each other, not across the street, but like next door. So we would, you know, I would go to the store for my parents because I didn't know what was going on. And and we'd shop and get what we could because, you know, things were a little bit unavailable kind of in Cleveland, at least. So we... This book is actually a really simple to cook out of because there's not a lot of complicated ingredients. I mean, the most complicated thing, those foreign to people might be like uh, nutritional yeast, maybe. No, but not, not nothing's more complicated. Or maybe some ramen, black ramen noodles, which come from Lotus Foods, by the way. Um, and it was a ton of fun and it gave us something to do during the pandemic. So, One of yes. the fun things was that because we live next door, if- Jane was making something mm. and th- this book is Jane is the power behind this. Um, she would bring it over or vice versa. And I can remember because we started <laughs> during the pandemic, we were watching TV. So at night when we'd be watching TV and I'd suddenly see the door open and I, <laughs> I, I would begin to salivate because I knew that she had another round of the brownies that she yes. was trying. How many did you I had about, make? About 10 or 12 rounds of the brownies. <laughs> so good. Um, but, you asked, but you asked about how this powerfully supports women. And the reason we made this book, you know, Be a Plant-Based Woman Warrior, you've kind of already covered for us. Like we have made, this is together my, my fifth and her third cookbook. And our other ones have been, you know, my mom wrote all the, the recipes in my father's book prevent reverse heart disease. You know, so she kind of did this with heart disease in mind. And then she and I did this book with heart disease in mind. And then we did so many of the engine two at the rips, you know, plant strong seven day rescue, the engine two cookbook, all these things with being a firefighter in mind. So well, finally, actually, finally, I was like, Jane, actually all so, probably part of the recipes in every one of rips first books. And when he was just beginning were from me. Oh, no. Yeah. From her. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. From uh, the engine two. So this book, I was just like, we want to just share our, our message. This is not necessarily about firefighting and this is not about heart disease, but about how to be a plant-based one warrior. Like, like, yeah. so I have three major yep. reasons why we push for this book. First was I wanted this to be a tip of the hat to my mom, because as you heard earlier, she in 19, in the eighties, but she had a full-time job, a husband who worked full-time, you know, also obviously, um, four kids, all athletes and a dog. She changed the way we all ate from being, you know, kind of eating the standard American diet kind of not we more that extreme, but to no, no meat, no dairy, no oil. And, and we all kind of were going, what's going on? Cause we were all athletes. I mean, division one athletes. 
um, I know on our way out of Mm -hmm. college and she pulled it off. And my parents today are on no lifestyle medication. They're just, they're on, they're on plants and they are active. They're interested. They're sharp. They, you know, my mom does yoga with me and, you know, I find her outside running through the woods when I go out and run around them, you know, for hours and miles. And so this book is truly a tribute to my mom because I want to be like my mom when I grow up. Come on, come yeah. on. And, and I, I have so that. energy and vitality and interest and curiosity and um, just uh, capacity, so much capacity. Yeah. And the, the second reason I wrote it, uh, we, we wrote it, I'm pushed for it. So that was, you know, live fierce, stay bold, is that most of the people in the world, not everybody, obviously, but the majority of people in the world who think about, plan, shop, prep, cook and serve food are women. Not all, there's plenty of men out there doing a great job, but what's happened is the way that we're eating, especially in the States um, and other cultures similar to ours is that we're having so much meat, grease and oil um, that is really leading us to have these lifestyle related diseases of type 2 diabetes, obesity, you know, cancers, common, small, uh, common small cancers. And just heart disease, especially just terribly. And these things are completely preventable and reversible. So I'm asking and trying to promote, like we, our message is, hey, just eat more veg, have more vegetables, have more fruit, have more greens, have more grains, have more berries, have more just things that are going to make you not go this way with your health, but go this way with your health. And it is possible. We've seen it as you have time after time after time. Things are preventable and reversible, and it's with food. And the third reason I wrote this is that I have three brothers, and they were all three, all four of us are, um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we're all athletes, and we all were athletes growing up. We all swam for our colleges um, in Division One, and so here I am swimming at Michigan. I'm 18 years old, and you know, made NCAA's and training, training, training every morning, every afternoon, every it just you know, you're a machine, and. I was, didn't like what was happening to my body. I was filling out and I thought, what? I don't like it. This doesn't feel like me. And I didn't really connect with my body. And I, I just felt like, what is going on? Like, I don't love with this. And I, I need to eat because I need to train. And that is exactly when my parents called and said, hey, just so you know, we're, we're going on this diet. We didn't have the word plant-based yet. They were like, we're not going to eat any meat or dairy or oil or sweet or salt or and I thought, oh my goodness, what are you guys eating? And, you know, I was young enough that I still kind of felt like I lived at home because I just had gone freshman fall to college, but it made sense. And it slowly over time, you know, I got, I figure out how to do it out of college and it felt good. And, and I, my body hasn't changed since then. And I, it, and I say that just because I like to not have food head, to not have this weight of concern, this burden of, being like an American female who's just feels like she's out, you know, her body is her message. Um, it's just, it's so liberating. I feel so lucky to have had these guys give us this the plant, a plant-based diet from the get-go. And you are so sharp. I So I've watched you. Like I said, I learn a lot of um, my recipes have come from watching both of you, especially during the holidays. We do, we make your mashed potatoes and your gravy. Uh, Jane, we make your, um, one of the dressings, I think it's yours, a three, two, one, something like that. The, it's the maple syrup, balsamic, lemon and mustard dressing. Yeah. I don't know if you, yeah, it's one of our favorites um, that we like for our salads. And um you know, I, I watch you, Anne, and I see your ability to recall information, to tell stories. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, if only, you know, most of us, I'm in my 50s and I, I take some time, some, you know, trying to recall information. It's really, it shows that this way of living can contribute to our quality of life as we age. So I really appreciate that. You know, and what I like about the dynamic between both of you is uh, you know, Jane, like, for example, you might hear this a lot that uh, I appreciate what you just said about women and us being the ones that mainly are the ones that are feeding our families. Many times in marriages, especially, you'll see that there's only one person on board and then the other spouse is still a little hesitant um, and we feel alone. We feel very alone that we don't have another family member on board. What you're showing us is what the 
what it looks like, the beauty of having a family member, especially another woman in the kitchen with you, having fun developing these recipes and knowing that you're nourishing your loved ones. So it's a wonderful example of what all of us, all women um, on this journey would love to have in our own family. So I appreciate what, what you do with your channel. That's wonderful you say that. But I, ha- I have to say we have four children and 10 grandchildren and everybody is plant based. Yeah. And my idea of heaven is to have them all here and everybody mm. cooking in the kitchen. Oh. Everybody. And because yeah. they all are amazing and we get such crazy, delicious food. Yeah, that's, that's such, beautiful. And even even. It, even the little ones. I mean, we have some who are now as eight or nine, nine and um, they can cook. I mean, when we have all together, we put some of the ki- little kids cooking and it's cool. <laughs> I love that. That's everybody's dream, right? Especially the little ones. They never have to develop heart disease or have traces of atherosclerosis. I mean, they start off on the right path very early on. The biggest gift that anybody can give to their family is to give them the power of plant-based. Yeah, your health is your wealth. Yeah. Uh, Jane, something that is uh, that I'm very passionate about as I dive into all of this women's health and understanding also lifestyle medicine, the importance of managing stress, exercising, especially as we get older. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I didn't know how important all of that was. You talk a lot about health, uh, sexual health. When people always say, how do you talk about sex? I don't talk about sex. I talk about being a sexual being. And these kids are going through puberty, which is for only one reason. So you, we all have gone through puberty so we can someday reproduce. I mean, at the age and stage of life, when you become physically capable of reproduction is what the, when that happens through puberty. And at the other end of that is, you know, menopause. And it's, so it's all natural what we're going into and coming out of, you know, these temples and whatever, lack of, lack of moisture in our skin at the other end. Um, but what I like to talk about with, uh, whenever I present to, adults about the benefits of a plant-based diet is that it's amazing how plants powerfully support women. And um, at our, our event we had on March 11th this year, because and we have an annual event for women. And this year it was be a plant-based woman warrior, how plants powerfully support women. And after we have every, le- every lecturer after which after they spoke, we would do the food to support what they were talking about. So we had we started out with breast health, Dr. Christy Funk, who I'm sure you know about, and she's amazing. She's so dynamic and powerful. And it was 18 foods to prevent, to, 18 cancer, breast cancer crushing foods. And she just went boom, 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 boom. And like, you know, soy was number one, number one soy products, not, you know, processed, but just the good ones. And then we cooked with them. And then I'm not going to go through every lecture, but my point I'm going to try to get to is we went through breast cancer. We went through um, heart heart health, my dad. The gut, honorary gut, woman. Honorary woman on that day. And then gut health with Dr. Robin Shutkin. Um, undercarriage health with Dr. Ann Bingham, my sister-in-law. And mental health with another doctor, Dr. Elizabeth Winings. And all of them talk about how plants powerfully support women in this way. So yes, with breast cancer. Yes, with mental health. But the undercarriage is where um, I think that women just, we don't, t- I mean, breast cancer, then those pink ribbons and awareness is out there. And it's sort of, we've normalized that we're using the word breast cancer in public. Um, but the undercarriage health, I say undercarriage because it's hard to, to, I don't like the words people choose to use otherwise. It doesn't, it doesn't always match what you're thinking. So I like to talk about the specifics of what's going on down there below the belt. And if you, if I can talk about it here today with you, I sure. will. Um, Please. Um, this was revolutionary for so many people. Well, no, no. Wow. Um, what I learned I love this. as a middle school, as a middle school, you're building it up too much, mom. Um, as a, <laughs> no, as a middle school teacher, you know, talking about all kinds of stuff with, with, um, the, with the girls and boys, you're talking about, you know, male anatomy and everyone kind of knows what you're talking about. Everyone has a sense they, they don't, either they babysat or they have brothers or cousins or something. Everyone knows the anatomy of males have, it's all external. It's out there. Um, and everyone's, you know, the boys especially are laughing and like ha, 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 the whole time. And there's this comfort and jocularity. But then with the females, it's really quiet because no one really knows what's going on, especially mm. these middle school kids. 
So Mm -hmm. I talk about this as adults whenever I have a chance to present because they don't know what this is starting in middle, you know, no one taught them middle school. So females, the front view is you have the page open earlier. Um, the front view of female anatomy is really, is really troubling because it doesn't have this, like girls don't often know where it is or, you know, Oh, that's in my body. We know where does that stuff live? My mom's trying to find the page of it and um, she just had it open and here it is. Well, I think it's a, you no, know, cause like female anatomy, right, like this, like people like, what is this? Where does it live in my body? You just don't even really know. So I learned and early on, you have to turn women sideways when you talk about them, because then you have all the, the everything you need in the cross section in the back. There's the a, Oop, an a, and I want, and the A is actually women and men have this. This is the anus. This is the back in the back. We have to have an anus and plant-based eating benefits this so much. You don't have an issue with constipation, which means you don't have an issue with diverticulitis. You don't have, uh, if you have hemorrhoids, they just deflate because they're not being, there's no pressure on those, on those, on those vessels. You have a decreased chance of colon cancer because everything's moving through. And, you know, the grease, the meat, the cheese things stay in there and you just have to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And you get these, you know, diverticula and um, all the complications that come thereof. I'm going to be quick about all this. So um, plant-based diet completely benefits everything back there in A. And then in front of the A, there is another hole. This is the vaginal space, the vagina. Um, the, the vagina, huge, This, if, if we venture up north here, above the vagina, you have the cervix, the uterus, and the endometrium, which is the lining of the, of the, of the uterus. The floping tubes and the ovaries, everything benefits from running on a woman's own hormones and not running on hormones from eggs, from dairy, from meat, from the flesh of meat, especially these cows that, you know, think that they're still pregnant or have just nursing their babies. So getting off a chicken, especially, oh my gosh, off all that stuff and running on your own cholesterol, your own hormones, that is astounding. We don't eat our chickens out there. They're the the neighbors. They're the neighbors. (laughs) They're the neighbors' chickens. So what this, what's so beautiful about this is that you have a decreased chance of, of especially like kids getting in puberty. Just so it's a much easier on ramp to puberty, and it's much easier off ramp into uh, menopause. It's really a powerful place to be because, and I'm going to come back to this in a second for another reason. But um, above here, up in here, and your endometrium, the lining of the uterus, is what is the, it, that has the most dynamic behavior of any part of your body. The vagina is just a space. It's like a canal. It's a lobby. Maybe it hosts a couple of things coming in and out, but it's just a lobby. And it's the goal of half of the population that might be heterosexual. So it's not a thing we should think about necessarily so much as everything around it. Um, the endometrial lining is what kind of is a nest that grows every month and it can, you know, that's where the egg lands and then it can be fertilized into a baby. Some women have issues with this and some women, their fertility is in the balance because of what's going on with the endometrial lining. They grow these things called fibroids, which is like to build up of all this tissue. It grows like a stalactite in a cave. It's just this tissue in her body and this, and it can drip, 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 um, blood out of the, of the uterus, out of the lining of the uterus and down, you know, through the vagina and the outside world. And she thereby is getting anemic because she's losing all this blood, not just with her cycles, but in between and from these fibroids. The fibroids also tell the uterus that it's occupied and she can't get pregnant if it's occupied. So we've had many friends and they've shared their story in our, in our book, especially this woman, Jordy, when they go off of eating meat and cheese and eggs, their fertility came back. This woman, young woman was told she had to have a hysterectomy right after her wedding at age 23. She went on a plant-based diet. She got pregnant. I wanted her to call her baby fib because it was like she was the fibroid, but also it was the fib. Her doctor told her that she had to have a hysterectomy right after her wedding. I'm going to come back to this space in a minute too. Um, the next, so what, so, you know, from front to back, they have an A, they have a V, they have a U, the urethra. This is not the uterus. The uterus is above the vagina. This is the urethra. This is where we pee from. And being on a plant-based diet totally helps your kidneys, um, which is your kidneys are, if you go up here, you've got your bladder and then your ureters and your kidneys. Kidneys love a plant-based diet because too much protein burdens your kidneys. They get exhausted. You can get kidney failure. Just too, too much protein is just too much of a burden on your kidneys. Ask anyone who deals with, with patients 
they'll say, oh yeah, yeah, kidneys tough on it. Kidneys have it rough with too much protein. Also, the eating of, ch- of um, especially chicken um, seems to have an antibiotic resistant bacteria in it. It's hard to get it off, not just your cutting board, your knife, your sink, and mm-hmm. your you know faucet, but out of your body. And if you get it in your body, it's in there and it, you know, you can get this UTI, urinary tract infection that you cannot treat with antibiotics. It's frightening. And I just know that we have three kids and I'm like, hey, you guys, please date a vegan who doesn't eat chicken because you don't want to be mucking around down there and get something <laughs> you can't get rid of. And then by this time, the seventh grade boys are going, oh my God, there's so many holes in a woman. Are you kidding me? How many holes do I have? <laughs> and um, there's more, there's more. So the last thing, the last thing, <laughs> the last thing is the C here in front. And the C is not a hole. This is not a hole. These are only nerves in the clitoris, clitoris, the clit, whatever you want to call it, designed for sexual pleasure. It's not a hole. It's a little little bundle of power, a little tissue of a of, 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 of pocket of flesh that's astounding. This polka dot right, right here. And this is not what was previously thought of 8,000 nerves. There are 10,000 nerves in the clitoris, all designed for sexual pleasure. And it is equivalent, I'm going to put this down so I can explain, it is the equivalent tissue of a penis. We're all made from the same Lego. So men have nipples, women have nipples. They just develop a little differently. But in utero, we have the same stuff. When a men have a scrotum, women simply pin it up and call it labia. But this, this powerful thing, this powerful tissue in the front, the clitoris is actually called the clitoris glands because G-A-L-N-S, the glands is the head of the penis. So the head of the penis is the same tissue as this. And then some, all the, all the real estate in the penis is then combined in here. And then some, the penis only has 4,000 nerves for sexual pleasure. The clitoris has 10, 10 K. I'm having a 10 K to celebrate the 10 K in June. Awesome. FYI. <laughs> Being, I'll, I'll right. give you more information on that. But this, this okay. 10,000 nerves for sexual pleasure here is astounding because, like I said, we have the same tissue as the males, males do externally. So where is all, like what's in the shaft of the penis is called the corpus cavernosa. We have that there in our bodies. I'm going to just hold up this here. And this, 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 um, the, va- the vagina, separate, separate, separate. There you go. The, the, I was doing a great job here with our props. The, the blood flow, when some, when some is stimulated in a sexual way, just like with them in the male's body, blood flow comes down in their body. And what happens is all the tissue, the corpus cavernosa that goes from the clitoris to the vaginal space, it just is on the pelvic floor. This engorges with blood, engorges with blood. This gets a little bit aroused, but like in the male's penis, it doesn't engorge with blood too much, just a little bit. But the blood flow comes over here. And it gorges and these corpus cavernosa, they're called crura in a woman's body. And it wraps around the vaginal space like a hippie hugging a tree. And all this vasculature around the vaginal space creates lubrication. And lubrication in the vaginal space is her sign of readiness. You know, an erection is a man's sign for readiness. So both the female body and the male body respond to this, their sexual messaging with blood flow, vascular flow, to make them function in a sexual way, either with an erection or with lubrication. And you have to have all these fine capillaries open and so that you know, single cell of blood flow that happens in, the, in, the, in those capillaries, um, open to the message of an erection, open to the message of creating lubrication. Because in the vaginal space, it, lubrication is made from, of plasma, which comes from blood, and female chemicals. So Incredible. Kuva, kuva, the- kuva. I was, have you trademarked Kuva? <laughs> this is genius. Yeah, people told me to, and I think, I, I think I've been using it legally for so long that it would be an interesting battle. But anyway, I, yes, I have T-shirts available um, on my website. But, I love that. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I should send you it. Um, anyway. Yeah, the, I love it. Being from Cleveland, people think it's like Cleveland United Vegan Association. We're like, no, clitoris, urethra, vagina, anus. And I love it. From plant-based diet. Awesome. I should add to, uh, for my listeners to know that you're a registered nurse um, and you're just, you know, along with your experience as a sex educator and now teaching women these things is just so empowering. I love the details. I, I really appreciate that. I Our listeners need to hear this. You know, like I said, I really want to help also empower my female listeners and what you, well, you know what? I'm put together here. That. But it's, it's you hate, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not assuming that anyone, has, I don't, I, I have, have a know part about the hood. Well, good. Then they won't they really miss you, hopefully. Um, but what <laughs> what it is is that it's you think you're empowering female listeners, but 
And if your female listeners have female partners, hooray. But if you have heterosexual partner, it, it empowers your partner. And that's what's so interesting. Like you talk about like, you know, uh, erectile dysfunction, you know, being so hard for a man. I'm like it's hard on everyone involved, like the whole partnership. And hopefully you have a positive, healthy sex life in your partnership or your marriage. And so with this, you know, knowing where, I mean, everyone wants to share pleasure with their partner or it's just, you know, it's sort of empty. Yeah. And, you know, Jane, you're so inclusive and I really appreciate that. What, what, what you're talking about when you teach this information to women is everything that in many ways I talk about when I have OBGYNs, for example, on the show to talk about preconception, preconceptual health. So everything a woman can do to optimize her body for pregnancy. So you're talking about minimizing risks for having PCOS, endometriosis, any sort of issue that can, that's right, um, you know, the hormones, um, and then really just fertility, optimizing your body for, for healthy pregnancy. And then, you know, when I didn't even know about gestational diabetes and how that could be a result of what we eat and lifestyle. And so we can reduce our risk for having, I say we, but, you know, in general, uh, women who would like to have pregnancy, uh, gestational diabetes, and then you're covering everything so that if we optimize our bodies early on, we can go through menopause without having so many complications as well. So you're, you're covering women's health throughout lifespan, really. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, why not? Yeah. It is, it, it, yeah. there's no secret. I think we mess it up by like, here's some kid food, macaroni and cheese and chicken fingers and deep fried nonsense and no vegetables and no fruit and, and, just, and milkshakes. Like, we, ugh, it's such a disservice, but you know, if, if we're eating from our, if our ecology and our economy kind of match up and we eat what we really can grow, it feels good. Like a, a friend of mine, she said, I am buying your book because you said to me, I'm 57. I'm a 57 Chevy. Um, <laughs> I was, we were talking and I was like, I hey, guess I'm in menopause. I don't know. I haven't had a period for a couple of years. And she was like, I, I, she's been haunted, you know, every couple of hours with debilitating, painful, hot flashes. And she's just like, are you kidding me? Like to not live, it's like having headaches or something. She's like, I, to, to, to not to live like this would be life changing. So I was like, I don't know. I guess I'm in menopause. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I have a sister who's a year younger than myself and she's had some difficult pregnancies when she was younger. And she called me and she said, I'm calling each one of you. It's four sisters, four of us. And she says, what has been your experience with menopause? Because I wake up in the middle of the night sweating. I'm so uncomfortable. And I said to her, you know, I'm I don't have that. <laughs> I started to, and then I, I realized right away, I no longer drink wine. I say that often, but I no longer, since I've learned about um, that, it's just not healthy to have. So, but that would be what would contribute to hot flashes from time to time. And so I said to my sister, who knows I'm on a plant-based diet, this lifestyle works for me. I don't have, and other things too, uh, Jane, you know, when it comes to what women battle with, I used to have acne. I've had thyroid problems. I've had weight issues, not significant, not a lot, but associated with my hypothyroidism. So all of those things clear and improve when you're on this lifestyle. I want to go back to your book uh, because you have a little section here and I've seen you when you're doing, when both of you are doing your videos, you can't really show the recipe. There are some copyright issues in your own book. You, you're not allowed to reveal the recipes. You have a section here called the Plant-Based Woman Warrior Kitchen. And I just, you know, that's one of the skills that we learn when we go back to the kitchen. Many people maybe were not raised by parents that cooked. And so we've had to learn what we need to have in the kitchen. How important is that to you uh, to include all of this in your recipe book, in your cookbook? Um, you know, it's just, it's, what are some of the essentials? Maybe that's what some know. of the things we that we know. can mention. It's funny you say that because we don't even know because this is the only kitchen we've had. But it, it also differs. I mean, like. Neither of us use the Instant Pot, but some people oh, couldn't live okay. without it. Because we okay. can't, we don't want our cookbook to be like, oh, you have to have all this important ski gear, you know, or like, this is, a, this is exclusive. We have pots and pans and hopefully you have a stove or a fire you can cook over. Yep. Yep. You also mentioned bowls, which I learned about the bowls again through all of you. Uh, oh, and so when bowl? I talked to, 
Buddha bowls, breakfast bowls, all kind of things, bowls related. When I talk to people, I say, use the bowl system that I learned from all of you. And you move away from relying on a recipe because as we know, either we waste food because we can't think of a recipe. Um, but if you want to just tell my listeners, what is the foundation of, say, a dinner bowl for you? Oh, my mom is so funny. She's like, I, I never really cook bowls. She's the original bowl maker. And she's the reason she doesn't realize it. But because we always wanted to get greens into every meal, like you have building your own bowl. We find bowls. Okay. Um, it, uh, uh, build your old bowl is this foundation of it. Literally, um, it isn't like, here's your plate. Here's what was cooked for you. Here's your plate of food. It's Here's a here's a bowl. We're gonna build it. No, no, no. A, no a, I want I want to read something about um, bowls and um, oh. um, the word. Okay, you can edit them if you want, but here it goes. Yeah. Um, build your own bowls, your own handheld bowls. The word pelvis means basin or bowl. Symbolically, what is more womanly and powerful than the pelvis? What it creates, what it holds, family, life, pleasure, vitality. Oh, I love so, it. So build your own bowl. <laughs> and the bowl starts with, in its foundation, greens. We mean arugula, kale, collards. Maybe spinach. Maybe spinach uh, <laughs> or spring greens or something. <laughs> Cook kale, I mean, you name it, beets, cauliflower, c- c- broccoli. Um, but greens are in there on the, on the foundation. And on top of that, some sort of complex carbohydrate, brown oh. rice, never white. Um, whole wheat pasta, never white. Barley. Barley, sweet potato, sweet potato. Quinoa. Rice noodles, like brown rice noodles or black rice noodles. Um, yeah, quinoa, uh, tricolor quinoa. It's just some complex carbohydrate. And those complex carbohydrates are filled with not just fiber and phytochemicals and micronutrients, but they also have um, so much uh, good, like essential fatty acids and, and, and things that we need and protein. Um, and then on top of that, we have you have people choose like beans, lentils, some sort of legume, some sort of pulses or tempeh or tofu, um, whatever sort of makes your boogie woogie in that way. And there's a bazillion ways to prepare it. We have a whole tofu tempeh section and, you know, we can always make our own beans or if you need to get it from a can, just make sure it rinse them or if it has no salt, try to get no salt. Um, and then a bazillion vegetables, cooked, raw, shredded, cubed, defrosted. We don't care how grow your own sprouts like my mom does. Um, and then we have a, then when our, our secret weapon is our sauces. And our most recent YouTube was this cor- lime corn sauce, which is so good. In fact, yeah, it just came out last night. She didn't know because <laughs> we make it and then we have to post them a couple days later. Anyway, the sauces just make, you know, imagine having whole wheat pasta without red sauce. Like Mm -hmm, you need mm -hmm. it, you know, imagine Mm -hmm. having a burrito without salsa, like you need it. So all these bowls we're making, we have, you know, the corn lime sauce, we have teriyaki sauce, we have Thai peanut sauce. Again, the nuts usage is coming with people who don't have heart disease or who are not struggling with trying to reverse their type of diabetes. Um, And on, on, and on, and on. So our publisher was so funny. They were like, you guys talk about sauces in, in, like, all the time. I mean, hummus, sauces, gravies, all these things. So they put, they wanted to put our sauce section first. But my mom was like, breakfast has to be first. And so it goes breakfast, <sighs> sauces in our book. Um, yeah, yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. And, then, and, I, and then the, the, the bowls are so just, just all around the book. Those yeah, that's bowls. true. Yeah. The sauces are so important to flavor the food so that because we need the food to be delicious to continue to eat this way. So, yes. So, and you're sort of like one of the original plant-based woman warrior. What continues to drive you today? You've been cooking this way for so long, but what drives you today? I don't have any other way to do it. I mean... What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, what you, because when I see you, you're, you're still, you're alive, you're excited. Like I, I think of what drives me like, you know, yes, uh, 
hearing the stories of people suffering every day, my husband's patients, and but also the people that come up to us from time to time and they say they're dealing with this and this and, and they see an improvement, um, you know, when they adopt plant-based foods, you still have this enthusiasm, this excitement, like a child, almost She's childlike. To She's too humble to say it, but she feels great. She's active and she can't stop thinking about the heart. At the things. end of Jane's conference, our daughter-in-law, Polly Labar, spoke. She's a brilliant speaker. And one of the things she, she said in her little short talk at the end of Jane's conference was that you needed to take 40 days to make any changes. And so I had just gotten a Peloton bike, which I hated. <laughs> just hated it because I felt like I wasn't too good at it. So I decided that I would go and ride the Peloton bike before breakfast for 40 days. I am now on day 18. But what Polly said when I told her, she said, text me every day. So I have done that, texted her. And by having to text her every day, and then she will respond great or comments. I just, I can't not do it. I can't not ride that Peloton every day. And I want to show you because one day. You want to answer I, her question. Yeah, I did. I one feel day, like you're answering it though. I, I you I, know, I, that's, I this is what you. Because the, the, my point is, if, if somebody thinks they can't do it, find a way to decide you're going to do it and, and get someone and be, a, get someone accountable to you. But what, what I wrote Polly and I said, Polly, why did you choose 40 days? And Polly said, it's based on both the science of habit formation and also several wisdom traditions and mystical numbers. So if you do the 40 days, you're working with the power of the universe. Mm, that's beautiful. So I, have I love the power it. Of the universe now, and it's inspired <laughs> me to go out and I not only ride before breakfast, I pull a tire, drag a tire, and then I do my sort of um, other things. So that's that's one thing that started all that. Yeah, that that seeing the physical strength that you have developed is amazing. And as you know, many of the people that come to this lifestyle are not necessarily athletic. And suddenly in their 50s, they find themselves running 5Ks. And by the way, Jane, you were going to tell us about a 10K. And please tell us about any other upcoming programs that you have oh for women. Gosh, well, I want, I want, something I want, so exciting. But I want, I want to say what my mom just said is, it's, is so, it's so interesting. You said, look, what keeps you going? It's like, there isn't even the thought of not doing what they're doing. Like there's no, for 30, 40 years, this is how they've shopped. Like I can't imagine somebody saying, Oh, how could, aren't you tired of going to church or something habit that's helped you in your life? I can't, you've done it enough. Like, no, this is part of the community that makes me who I am. And, and I feel so good about it. So what if you stop making your bed every morning, you know, <laughs> it's just bed. part of who well, you are. You do. Yeah. And you suddenly don't. don't. Yeah. Right. It's like throw it. But anyway, um, so you're quite, oh, oh well, we so have, you yeah. were talking about a tank cake. No, well, we have, uh, we, what we have coming up is, uh, this is June, so June 22nd to 25th, we have a camp for plant based women warriors. It's called Well Now Camp and it's for plant based women warriors. It's just for women now or people who identify as women. And it's on the Kenyon College campus and, um, which is in Ohio. And it is a blast. We have, no sitting down, no ass time listening to lectures. We have activity. We have, um, that it's optional and that doesn't have to be, I know you can always take a nap if you want to, but we have arts and crafts. We have, um, um amazing. She has collected the most crazy, amazing staff. staff. We were, uh, so we have like our camp walk. counselors, if you will. So we have improv and we have writing and we have cooking demos and lessons, hands on that, you know, participation and, um, and on and on. It's just camp. It's camp. We have s'mores, plant-based s'mores, which are so fun. Um, and amazing food. And the, yes. the Kenyan ca the kitchen. The dining services really has worked with me for years to get this right. And so the food is delicious. Um, and, and the camp, Kenyan campus is spectacular. Um, anyway, so it's, we have it. So camp well now, well now camp. It's, um, I, on my website, janeesselson.com, or if you follow on Instagram, you can see it in my link tree. 
um, in the bio, but uh, that's coming up. And um, I'm also speaking at a couple places coming up. We're at Kripalu. I don't know if you have heard of Kripalu. It's a yoga health retreats in, in um, the Berkshires of Massachusetts. Um, we're doing a thing to get together there. I've been invited to Alaska to present in July. And I've been t- invited to do it in Montana in May. Oh. And anyway, all these places need to fill up. So if people are wanting to come yep. to these events, please come to Well Now Camp. And if you want to go someplace, yes, yes. this of us and our whole fun curriculum or camp schedule. Um, but it would be great to have anybody join. Um, yeah. And- How many participants can you have there at, at your camp? Oh, we, you know, we, it's a college campus. So let's bring it. Do we like, okay. <laughs> between, like, we like having between close to 30 to close to 50 like that. We don't, if it's too big, we do, it's too big. Oh. And if it's too small, you know, it's too small. So we like having that feel of like a camp group. 20 uh, is nice because you get to know. You get to know. And, you know, we have had up to 50 and we've had, we have, we have to cancel with COVID. But anyway, the 10K for the 10K is, it's going to be, obviously we're going to do something at camp with that um, on June 24th, but it's, it's going to be able to be run virtually. Also, people can sign up to just basically just sign up, get information because what I want people to do is do 10 K of something. I don't care if you drive a 10 K, put someone in your car with you and discuss these points on this, on this, what you think. I also have headbands with polka dots to represent the, the Taurus, which is a spot, <laughs> not, they're not, it's not the vaginal space, which is the target. Oh. Something else. It is the power center. So you can get headbands and information. You can drive 10K. You can walk 10K. You can do 10,000 steps. You can knit 10,000 knits and pearls while you talk about these things. You can what are you talking ride about? a bike for 10. You, the list of like, oh. here is this, 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 this is, this is a, this is the conductor of pleasure in a woman's body. And it is right here in, you know, north of right. the, of the, of the, but you have space. questions you're going to give them. To yes. Like a oh. list of discussion points. We're going to have a video with the doctors, the researchers who, who discovered this or, and whatever came upon this research. Um, so yeah, it's going to be the 10K for the 10K. All right. Well, this is exciting. I'll put all your links in the show notes. I just really want to thank you for taking the time. If you'd like to, if you have a final message for my women, female listeners, please, uh, please, what do you think? Uh, feel free to share anything you'd like. com. We'll have it all going there. And you can, if someone wants to talk to my mom and we, we do, we do appointments phone calls oh i didn't know about that do you want to tell us more like uh do they just people who are on a plant-based path sometimes they have questions they want to talk about just they want to talk about recipes or like what do you do about this it's they're hilarious they're always fun they're always informative and you can just sign up on our on janeasselston.com okay I, okay, I have one more question. And I just because it, it sounds fun about your YouTube videos, just your videos in general. I, you know, give us a little bit of insight of what it's like when you both make a video. Uh, you know, you're cooking a recipe. How long does it take to, to make a video? And has it gotten any easier over time? Uh, because you do, you did say that you have a videographer that um, helps you out with these videos. Oh no, we have a whole set. We have a whole, you know, a whole set of five cameras and lights and all this stuff. So we have, and half the time, the recipes we make don't work the right way, the way they should. Just, just day two. No, 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 no. But I mean, like, I can remember I put in too much flour before. Is it hot? Well, I mean, it's nothing's perfect. No, and well, in other words, when you're when you're filming. It, it's it's different than where you're in by yourself in the kitchen because no, you probably no, 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 have no. This, the no? guys, our videographer team they're like family and we we all we do is we we have like eight recipes we're going to do in a day so we have eight headbands and eight scarves and eight shirts so we just change our tops okay we have the same haircut the same dead flower in the background for eight in a row <laughs> and and we don't because we don't what do you care and then we have this zero right. rehearsal we're like okay ann's driving she's gonna make this gravy and then jane's driving she's gonna make this sauce or whatever whatever okay. we're do it together yeah we're gonna do you know, an oatmeal competition like whatever there's zero planning except we get the food we need so if we burn yeah. something we're like oh we kind of scorch it this time whoops <laughs> never has ever happened before so we yeah. just it's there's nothing it's just completely live and real and i, I love it on the on the sauce that we just did the corn sauce lime corn, lime sauce. corn sauce so good i realized that what i put in the book was wrong 
And I was so happy to have the YouTube to make the correction. Don't oh. use the vinegar at the end. It's just nice. Oh. Just the lime. Mm-hmm. Which is That's good to know. Acid queen to say. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. You thank you. Thank you. you are wonderful. You are thank you. doing a and gift th- for yeah. women. And, well, everybody thank you so much. And the world. Yes. Yeah. And I definitely want to put that link for your camp because that was one reason I wanted both of you to come on the show is to promote that. I want my female listeners to have access and to hopefully join your camp and buy themselves a copy of this wonderful woman warrior book. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. You're a a warrior too. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, thank you. You've been listening to the Healthy Lifestyle Solutions podcast with your host, Maya Acosta. If you've enjoyed this podcast, do us a favor and share with one friend who can benefit from this episode. Feel free to leave an honest review as well at ratethispodcast.com forward slash HLS. This helps us to spread our message. And as always, thank you for being a listener. 